If you're looking for a way to deal with your stuff, your physical stuff, you want to declutter, you're not sure how to process it, you want to just get rid of some stuff, maybe you're preparing for a move and you want to get rid of some stuff, whatever it might be, one of the five rules I talk about in this video might help you declutter. There are rules in life. There are rules in board games, there's rules in the board game of life, there are rules in school, there's rules in your house, your mom's house. <laughs> there are rules everywhere. They, they govern how we behave. You are meant to follow the rules. I am a pretty good rule follower. I also am a pretty good rule breaker. My name is Erica Lucas. Welcome to the channel. I typically share videos about minimalism and living with less. Two of these five are my favorites and I genuinely use a lot. I have tried every single one of these. If you know of other rules in minimalism, please comment below and tell me what they are so I can read about them and try them. Also, along the way in this video, comment to me about ones that are sticking out to you that you wanna try. I hear the word rule and I feel like it can't be broken. It's not bendable. It, it can't be manipulated to work for me. So I don't like the word roll when, <laughs> when it comes to minimalism because I don't like to be confined and restricted in any way in life. If you, if you take these rules for what they are intended to do for you, then the word roll doesn't matter. It can be guide, it can be a helper, a declutter guide, whatever you want to relabel it as. Don't think of it as something that you can't manipulate to work for you. Minimalism for me is about a being intentional about the things we have, being intentional with our time, being intentional with our money, um, shopping purposefully, spending mindfully. All of these things encompass minimalism for me. And these rules have helped me get there. So the first one, the 90-90 rule, states that if you haven't touched the item in question in 90 days, and you're not gonna to touch it for the next 90 days, maybe it's time to let it go. This might work really well in your kitchen. If you feel suffocated by the things in your kitchen, then apply this rule for a little bit. Maybe you can get rid of some cookbooks. Maybe you could get rid of a muffin tin because you don't make muffins. Maybe you have four cookie sheets. Probably don't need four cookie sheets. Why do you have four cookie sheets? And Figure out little areas that you could apply the 90-90 rule in your life. It also could work in your closet if you live in an even temperate climate where you've got year round weather. I, I don't have that. I, I have seasonal weather on the east coast of the United States. And so the 90-90 rule doesn't apply to clothes. Our winter things go get packed up. I haven't touched them in more than 90 days, but I do want to touch them in winter time. I don't want to buy a whole new winter wardrobe. So the 90-90 rule doesn't necessarily apply if to seasonal or holiday items. All of our Christmas stuff, our fall stuff, our spring decor, all that stuff gets packaged seasonally and I don't apply the 90-90 rule to that. The next rule is the 30-30 rule. This is one of my favorite rules because it really helps me not spend money. Um, this rule, this rule guides me in my shop purposefully, spend mindfully lifestyle. If you have something on a wish list in, in your life that you want to buy and it's more than $30, wait 30 hours to buy it. Oftentimes you may find that you don't actually want it right now in your life, or you have an alternative that would, that would work and you could save yourself that money. And if you do that over and over and over, that $30 is gonna stack up. And this is really good if you have a shopping issue. So if you have Amazon packages that come to your house and hit your doorstep and you're like, hmm, what was it I bought? That used to be me. Maybe this rule would help you. <laughs> or maybe if you hide Target bags in your trunk of your car from your spouse, maybe this rule would help you because it's gonna help you with that impulse buy. So, you know, I'm mentioning this not to call you out on your shopping habits, but to say that that is how I used to be. Now, shopping 
purposefully and spending mindfully, I'm able to use that rule over and over again, which is why I love this rule. This rule for me, <clears throat> this rule for me, <laughs> I'm going to put in a caveat here. If you have a hobby or you like to collect things, shred yourself of the misconception in minimalism that you can't have hobbies or collections or passions. You can make, make minimalism about you. And if you are intentional about your hobby or the thing that you love to collect, then that's incredible and it makes you happy. So keep doing it. And if you have a missing piece of your collection that costs more than $30, wait 30 hours. And if it's still something you really would want to have in your life, then you can spend the money having given it a lot of thought, 30 hours of thought. Well, assuming you sleep in there, but maybe you're dreaming about it. I don't know. So for me, <laughs> this applies to books. We decluttered a ton of books. We perpetually declutter books and I perpetually buy books. I'm a big reader. My husband's a big reader. My oldest is a big reader. My other two kids can't read yet, but we read to them every day. So we are surrounded by books in our house. I think there's something to be felt in childhood to have books around you. I think it's great. I, I just like what it instills in them. We prioritize reading in our house. So books are a big deal in our house. I mostly read on my Kindle when it's the leisure casual reading. I buy them on my Kindle, so it's not clutter in our house, but I do have a ton of hardback and paperback books that I've read that I'm hanging on to and I'd still read again. And then ones that are my to be read pile. That to be read pile gets past 30 bucks pretty quickly. So I have to <laughs> stack up my wish list, my to be read wish list, and then live with it for a while. And I live with it more than 30 hours before I end up buying things. And they're books that I genuinely really, really want to read. It's topics that I'm currently interested. It's ones I know I'm going to make notes from and lessons and apply things in my life and, and have key takeaways from these books that I'm reading. Those are the ones that I buy in hardcover and paperback. They're also the ones that I reread over and over and I reference. They're ones that I gift to someone else who is going through that topic and wants to learn more. So these books, these this passion of mine, this reading hobby, for me, will not be held back by minimalism, but it will be controlled by the rule of 30-30. The next rule is my favorite rule for decluttering, the 20-20 minimalism rule. It states that if you can replace an item for less than $20 in less than 20 minutes, feel good about letting it go because you can replace it inexpensively and quickly. So this really helps me when I'm decluttering. And it helped my husband as well when he starts to, when he was starting to declutter the shed and his closet, you know, okay, I can replace this with something I really, really want. And oftentimes it's not something we really, really want. I have applied this 2020 rule many times and only once have I regretted decluttering something. And it was bowls in our kitchen eight months ago. My husband was right. I donated too many bowls. I had to go buy bowls. Otherwise, I've never decluttered something with this rule and lived to regret it. So those are my two favorite rules, the 30-30 rule and the 20-20 rule. The next, the fourth rule is the 10-10 minimalism rule. It takes some time to think about. This rule is kind of a beast and really calls you out. So you list your 10 most expensive things that you've spent money on in the last 10 years, and you list the 10 highest value life experiences and uh, things that added the most value to you in your life. And you look at the imbalance between the two lists, things you spend a ton of money on and things you didn't spend any money on, but gave you the most value in your life. Time with your friends, time with your family, that kind of thing. It took me a long time to come up with my list. And it did not take me a long time to think of the 10 most expensive things <laughs> we've bought in the last 10 years. Now, I don't regret those expensive purchases. I certainly, give a lot of thought now to the way we spend money. So I don't have financial regret for decisions that I've made during my minimalism journey. I have financial regret and guilt about things I've spent money on before, but now that I've been living this life and I, 
price shop. I really give things consideration. I spend money on things that we genuinely need or I really do want to have and intentionally buy. I don't have regrets. I don't have that financial guilt by using these rules, by really giving consideration to how we're spending money. The last rule is the one in one out rule. This rule works for a lot of people. Let me know below if this rule is something that you live by. Straight up, I do not like this rule. It just doesn't work for me. And that's because I shop with intention. Now, um, I could see before how this rule would definitely help me mitigate my stuff. So if I was not living a minimalist life and I still had all my stuff, if I bought a new sweater, I would live this rule and get rid of another sweater because I wasn't, I didn't have a closet full of things I loved. Now I do. Now I have a closet full of things I love. So if I buy a sweater, it's intentional and I'm not going to get rid of another sweater just to exchange the one to one. It's just not how I need to live anymore. But I can see how this rule would really help you manage the amount of things you have in your house. Thank you for watching. Here's the most recent video and the 90-90 minimalism rule video that I mentioned.